So today's project is a 20 meter mini beam uh, and apologies for any wind noise or a nail gun you might hear in the background. Um, so the beam is based on a design by Gary KJ5VW uh, and I'm going to try and do it uh, reasonably cheaply. I think all this probably costs about £10 or $10. So I'm going for a plastic boom. Hopefully that won't sag. I don't think it will for the length I'm using. Um, bamboo garden canes for the uh, arms. The elements will be uh, flex, just simple electrical home wire. Um, I need to wind some coils. I'll use that plastic conduit as a former. And then to attach those arms on the end of this pipe, I'll either drill and put them in. I don't think they'll sag. I might use a T piece with a little piece of plastic to support it maybe. Uh, or I might put a chopping board piece on and cable tie. I might need the chopping board for the middle as well to attach the mast. So hopefully we'll get all these pieces together, uh, wind some coils uh, and see how we get on. So this is what I meant about putting in uh, a tea piece and a small piece of plastic. Um, unfortunately that only goes to there, it doesn't go all the way through. But I could put cane in there and then use that tea piece as a support. Or I could cut a square of chopping board, attach it to the end of the pipe and then cable tie the elements on there. If I bolt the chopping board through the pipe it'll stop it pivoting and I could disassemble the beam for storage so I'd have an element, well both elements front and back separate. So I might, I might try the chopping board route first. So this is 8mm chopping board, I've got 10mm um, uh, if I need it. Um, so I've gone for 200 mil by 60 mil. So I'll drill that through there once I've cut this out. Maybe support that inside with a piece of wood or something. And then I'll cable tie the canes either side. That's the plan anyway. So you can see I've drilled the plate. Uh, three holes I think will be sufficient. I don't think the cane will flex that much. Uh, obviously I need to keep it straight but they're quite light. So centre wise I'm just thinking of bolting that pipe through there and then I can always disassemble the elements and make it really small to store. I'm just wondering whether that just needs a bit of strengthening. Um, I've got another small end cut of plastic pipe that fits inside there so I could cut a piece off just to strengthen that. So that's next anyway, see how I get on. So this is the front element attached and you can see on the block pave it's reasonably straight um, but I've still got a bit of play I can just move that back and forth which at that end does that so I might uh, I don't know might some crisscross cable ties or I suppose you could technically glue down there with hot glue I thought about drilling the bamboo but I think it might split even with a small hole um, so next time you see this there might be a bit more sort of lashing going on um, I suppose even some thin nylon rope but I'll see if I can tighten this up a little bit more so they don't rock so much but as you can see bolts are through so removing those I haven't put washers on but it's not going to be up in a gale it's only going to be up temporarily uh, if you are doing something similar you might want to think of a different way of, uh, of making this a little bit more solid. But let's see anyway. So I'll uh, I'll maybe lash this on a bit better. So I've gone for double cable ties on either end. There's a bit less flex now. Uh, and I can always tweak that. But obviously there's a bit of... A bit of sort of wang in the canes themselves anyway. As you would expect in any aerial. So... Um, yeah, I think I'm happy with that for now. There's a start anyway, start of a 10. So I just thought this would be a town reminder of where we're up to and what's next. So each element is 8 feet long, that's 2.44 metres. Uh, and this uh, can be the dipole end, it doesn't make much difference. Either end is going to be the reflector. So 16 feet wide in total. Uh, and now the boom needs to be uh, 8 foot 6, which is 2.59 metres. Now that is uh, from element to element so this booms a little bit longer because you can see uh, I've got a little bit of overhang so 
8 foot 6 from that element to the next element uh, 2.59 meters so I'll cut it a little bit long to allow for this same setup on the other end I've lined that element up uh, the first element up against the block paving on the drive so I know it's straight uh, and now I've got the uh, rear element to attach uh, I attached the plate unfortunately you can see I didn't get it perfectly square it needs to be up on that side but I'll just leave it as is and then uh, adjust these to counter that so again I've got these straight against the paving um, so I'll drill again and, and cable tie these on as well so here we are with the basics of the Yagi put together uh, just as a reminder it's 16 feet wide which is 4.88 meters and the boom is um, let me check it's 8 foot 6 2.59 meters now I might just support the middle part of the boom a bit uh, by inserting some wood in there or another piece of plastic like the white I use on the ends uh, there's a little bit of sag but once it's supported in the middle uh, there's probably not much actually so I'm not quite sure on that I'll need to check so we need to cut the wire uh, attach the elements uh, and wire the coils there's a, a way to tune this antenna uh, which is a case of doing the dipole first and then the reflector um, so we'll move on to that stage now so here are my two coils we need four in total um, the uh, original design by Gary had me confused to start with. He mentioned a half inch pipe, but he was putting on a 5 8 inch dowel. And it turns out the uh, reference was to do with PVC pipe sizing. Um, so half inch in the US is actually 21.4 mil in the UK. I'll, I'll show the table. Um, he used 22 gauge wire. Uh, I've used um, good old uh, mains cable, uh, 0.75 mil twin flex, really useful this stuff. It's nearly the same size as 22 gauge. Um, so I've um, worked out using an online calculator, I'll show you the, the uh, calculations in a second, that this 20 mil diameter, which should be 21.4, requires a few more turns. So Gary had 32, I've got 36 uh, to achieve the same, the same um, reading. So, um, hopefully these measure up okay so I'll uh, I'll do a measure now so this is the UPVC pipe conversion table you can see half inch on the right which is 21.4 mil on the left and here we have the wire gauge conversion so 22 gauge is 0.64 I'm using 0.75 so it's 21 not far off uh, here's the calculations for Gary's coil 32 turns 2.14 that's the length I know from my coil windings and here you can see it's 5.6 micro henries. Um, so I've adjusted the table, 36 turns, uh, 20 mil or two centimeter diameter, uh, 8.2 long, and then uh, same result, 5.6. So here we are in the shack, uh, measuring uh, coil number one, um, not far off, 4.17. So I think that's probably within tolerance in terms of what we're making. So we'll just see what the other coil's like. Here we are, coil number two, uh, 4.28. So reasonably close to each other. Um, happy with those. Hopefully it'll work. So we need to choke the antenna at its feed point on the dipole uh, for two main reasons. One, to stop stray RF travelling down the coax and causing issues in the shack or perhaps in the home. And secondly is to maintain the, the beam pattern uh, which is the whole point of having the antenna in the first place. Two types of choker available. Uh, air wound, this is off my uh, 10 metre mini horse. This is five turns of RG58 on a four and a quarter inch former. Uh, for 20 metres, we need 15 turns of RG58. So that would be uh, quite wide, uh, but cheap. Uh, the other option is to use ferrite cores. This is a 240 diameter and type 43 uh, and I'll just put some tables up now from Steve G3 uh, TXQ uh, just to show the differences uh, of how these work. So apologies for some of you this is going over old ground but the uh, aim for a choke is to, to choose one that is uh, both high impedance and resistive over the bands we want and that's where air chokes uh, struggle because they're generally wound uh, specifically for a band and can't cover many bands. So here you can see for air chokes out of the options available 15 turns of RG58 on a four and a quarter inch former 
is probably the best option for the air choke. So here you can see when we come to the ferrite type 31, uh, better than air choke, uh, 12 turns on RG58. And moving up type 43, which is what I'm using, uh, 12 turns of RG58 uh, gives a good resistive and impedance coverage, you can see on that chart. And ultimately type 52 is better still, I don't have one of these, but and 17 turns might be a bit of a push on a, on a 240 ferrite ring. So in part two, we'll finish the build and tune the antenna. Uh, I'll actually amend how this antenna is built based on some lessons I've learned uh, and then do some on-air tests. If you like this video, please like and consider subscribing. If you hit the bell, you'll also be notified of new videos when they're released, including part two of this one. Thank you and 73.